Okay, just thought I'd make another video. I'm kind of getting inspired to do more videos. I have a lot of products to review. <coughs> Anytime I buy something, I can review it, and I have several. <coughs> I have a new Chromebook I can review. I have a new exercise bike I can review. <laughs> Today, I thought I'd do, this is not so much a review as just to say that the AMD Radeon RX 570 is quietly, in case you haven't been keeping up with the video card market, <coughs> By far the best deal in budget video cards, best deal in video cards. Um, I'm going to try to keep this video to 20 minutes. My, my videos always go so obscenely long, I'm trying to cut that down, but <coughs> maybe 25 minutes because my last video went in unbelievable 35 minutes. But uh, yeah, I mean, the backstory was I'm not a big PC gamer. I mean, I was back in the day when PC gaming was awesome. And there was stuff like Unreal Tournament. Yes, I'm old. Half Life, uh, Half Life, the original Half Life was incredible. You know, I was, I'm old enough, Baldur's Gate. You know, I'm old enough to remember when like games were made just for PC and they were awesome. Now, you don't see games made just for PC anymore unless they are like, you know, free to play, like stuff that Korea likes. And I'm not into all that. You know, like League of Legends would be a perfect example of what's out there nowadays. I'm just not, you know, that to me that's for like a younger, like Asian audience. I'm not into League of Legends. I'm not into Counter Strike, you know, that. I'm more of like a, what a console gamer, you know, AAA experiences. Not necessarily single player because I play like Destiny a ton. I've played thousands of hours of Destiny. But yeah, anyways. Uh, but the thing is, I have an Xbox One X. I have a review of that on my channel and everything. And I just prefer the console experience. I prefer sitting on a couch. And to me, the audio visual, you know, people may say like, oh, on PC, uh, you know, the graphics are so much better, blah, blah, blah. Well, that depends. Like, I have an Xbox One X, and this RX 570 that I own is not as powerful as my, the graphics card in my Xbox One X. The Xbox One X is a 6 teraflop GPU. This is a, like, a 5.1 teraflop, I think, something like that. So I just prefer the comfy couch cliche experience. You know, I have a 65-inch nice HDR TV, not, a, not the crappy HDR. Um, I could guess I could do a review on that thing too. Uh, cause I got it maybe like a six months ago. I don't even remember six months to a year somewhere in there. Nah, I think it's probably much closer to six months, if not less. <laughs> Sometimes I have no conception of time. <laughs> but anyways, I prefer like console gaming. I just do. I like the controller. You know, I always people make a big deal out of mouse and keyboard being supposedly superior. But honestly, controller is superior for most experiences. I mean, what's better for a, like a Street Fighter game? Mouse and keyboard or controller? Mmm, a controller. What's better for like a Batman or whatever beat em up? You know, third person beat em up. Mmm, controller. You know, uh, what's better for a platformer? You know, Mario or something like that? Mmm, controller. You know, <laughs> pretty much the only genres, there's only a couple genres where mouse and keyboard is actually better. You know, and people never give the c console credit, but most cases the controller is the superior uh experience you know like i said think of uh what's that sony one that just came out uh spider-man you know what's going to be better to play that it's basically a third person beat him up controller you know uh so people say like mouse and keyboard is best but it's really only best for one or a couple of types of games which is first person shooters and uh like real time strategy games because they're so complex and you have all the keys and everything on a uh, PC. But there's like five, you know, the vast majority of games and genres controller is honestly better for. But anyways, uh, continuing on, uh, so I, I just prefer the console gaming experience and audio visually. You know, people say like, oh, you can crank the settings, and there's a lot to be said for that, of course. You know, you can get a monster powerful G GPU and crank the settings so high. Well, first of all, nothing's made to take advantage of PCs anymore. So all you're really getting is the console game just gussied up like 10%. You know, you're not getting a C change. You only get a C change when a new generation of consoles come along and then the games are built ground up for the, those more powerful consoles. You know, what you get the rest of the time is on PC, you're getting the console games prettied up a little bit, you know, 10%, 20% better, higher resolution, higher textures, little things, you know, a little bit better shadow, you know, nothing that's going to be like a generation gap. 
So, and then, like I said, uh, which is really the better audio visual experience for me, and I think most people I have, I mean, I just upgraded to a 32 inch 1440p monitor. And that's a story into itself, but uh, I didn't go for like a super high refresh rate because I don't care, you know, I can't, I don't care about stuff like that really. I didn't go for G Sync because I don't care. My brother has G Sync and he told me it's not that great and he PC games a lot. Uh, you know, you can go on and on. Uh, so I have a 32 inch 1440p monitor and luckily I upgraded that. Even that's a big upgrade. And I have little dinky computer speakers, probably like most people. You know, I mean, they're Logitechs, but I don't have a subwoofer because I don't want something kicking around down my, down my, my feet. You know, it's kind of cramped at a computer and so on. So to me, the better audio visual experience is like an Xbox One X, 65 inch screen. And at my living room, I have a sound bar and a subwoofer, you know, for some boom and audio. So the overall experience, even if the graphics are a little worse, even if they were, which they ne aren't necessarily, but even if they are, kind of the better audio video ex audio visual experience in the living room on the console than at the, sitting at a desk at a small monitor and no you know subwoofer and whatnot and a 32 inch monitor versus a 65 inch HD TV you know <laughs> anyways uh, now I understand you can hook your PC up to the TV but nobody does that let's be realistic <laughs> and it would be a huge pain in the ass you'd have to have like a, a keyboard ready at all times you know, I understand there's big picture modes on Steam and whatever. So, but, you know, to me, that's not a viable option. You can't just reply with, well, you can just play on your PC on your team. No, you, you can, but the way I have it set up, I'd honestly, like, my PC is my base station. And I spend a lot of time on the internet and everything. So I'd have to have, like, a, a PC just for gaming because I'd have to have a separate PC in this room to, you know, surf the web on. <laughs> So I'd need like a second PC because I can't have my main PC in the living room on my TV. I need it on my monitor so I can surf the wet. You know what I'm saying? And I have a laptop and all that, but it wouldn't work. I, I can't use a laptop as my main station. A laptop pales next to a 32-inch monitor, you know, and a, a more power. Anyways, so I've never pre I prefer PC, the console experience, and over the years it's gotten even worse and worse. And, I pretty much never game on PC, and I haven't for a while, and I like to build gaming PCs, but at some point I realized that I was a lot more into building the gaming PC than playing games, and it was a waste of money on the PC anyway. So I had to kind of make myself, even though I love buying PC gaming components, I love, it's probably one of my favorite things on earth, putting together a gaming PC and building it myself and buying the motherboard and the CPU and, and the RAM, you know. But I had to kind of slap myself on the wrist at some point and tell myself, look, you don't need this. You don't play PC games, you know, especially when it comes to a GPU. I mean, I like having a decent PC just for surfing the web and, you know, doing PC stuff. I don't do any work on it, but um, but especially a GPU is just worthless to me because I don't PC game much. But I do like to have the ability to fiddle with a PC game here and there. So, enter my situation, which it was, I had a, I rebuilt my PC a few years ago, and I put a, I made an i5-6600K and 16 gigabytes DDR4, and at that time I bought a Radeon RX 480 GPU for it, 8 gigabyte RAM and everything, but, you know, a couple years later, the, the mining boom came, and they were selling pretty good, so I'm like, I don't use this graphics card, you know, I just don't use it much, I just wasn't PC gaming, as I said. So I was like, I might as well sell this, and I was able to sell it for I think 400, and I remember netting like a hundred, like 370 or something like that from it, you know, netting after the, the fees from eBay or wherever I sold it was. So, and I remember figuring that I'd paid 260 after tax and shipping, whatever from Newegg, I'm sure. So I netted like 110, and that was like a year later. So I was fairly happy. It, it, you know, to me, it, it was more like okay, something I'm not, I don't use versus 370 dollars. You know, I'm gonna choose the 370 dollars. So, so I was without a GP for like the last couple years, I think it was, and I just ran on my i5 6600K. And I even the Destiny 2 PC demo came along, and I wanted to try it because I'm a big Destiny player. And they don't have cross save, so I wasn't going to switch to PC, but I would play it in addition to console if they would have cross save. But anyways, I, I really was just, you know, it's the game I've spent a big, 
big amount of time in, so I thought I might as well, you know, I really want to be interested to try it on PC. So I was forced to play it on my damn i5 6600K IGP, <laughs> which was an experience in itself. But basically, I had to turn it to all lowest settings, and at like 720p, it would get anywhere from like 15 to 25 FPS. At those settings and resolution, it kind of looked like a 360 game, in my opinion, probably. But anyway, so, but really, you know, so finally I got a little more money in the checking account recently, and I'm like, I kind of want to look for something just, just to have some gaming capability on my PC, to play some, maybe maybe some indie games, like I was a little interested in Celeste. Now I don't need that anymore because I got it for free on my Xbox. I think it was free with Xbox Gold recently. But, um, you know, just indie games like that, you know, and, and just something to play on a PC. I don't want to be just limited to my console. Even if it's a game I can play on my PC and my console, you know, every once in a while I feel like playing it on PC again, getting that PC feeling again. Not much, but, so I thought, well, I'll, but, I, but on the other hand, I had to tell myself, look, you don't need to spend much money because you just don't PC game much, so don't waste money. So, I went around looking for a video card for the last, like, year or two for, like, a hundred bucks, you know, somewhere in there. I really was like, don't waste your money, get something cheap. So I ended up finally finding a good deal on Slick Deals and getting this, which is the ASRock Phantom Gaming X rated on RX 570. The key thing here is it's 8 gigabyte. Now this thing ran me 149 out the door. Not bad for an 8 gigabyte card. And you can see it's got some overclock features too. It has an overclock mode of 1331, a default mode of 1280, and a silent mode of 1228. So it comes with a little bit of a factory overclock too. I forgot the default on... Um, the RX 570, I think it's like 1260 or something. So like the default mode of this card is like a little faster than a default 570. And then I just run it in default, of course. So you can see it's got a little overclock. I'm sure it's not a screamer, but um, it was 149. You can see uh, it's not available anymore. And I bought it like a couple weeks ago, but I went to my order history to look up the exact model and everything. Key thing was I got... um. 8 gigabytes, that's what I wanted, you know, I didn't want to get a video card, because I had seen deals on 4 gigabyte 570s for a little cheaper, but it's like, I just want something that I know that the RAM's not going to be a limiter on my 1440p monitor. And this fit the bill, and it, when I was doing it, I mean, there were times when I went into Best Buy, and I was, I was thinking, like, I just should buy something, and, you know, the cards they had for like 129 bucks were like a GT 1030, which is pathetic, you know, maybe two gigabyte of RAM on it, you know, at best like a RX 564 gigabyte, you probably can't even get that for 150 at Best Buy, you know, terrible deals, to get this with eight gigabyte and so much faster, I was so happy, and um, yeah, this was on sale for 149 and it had a $20 rebate too, now the thing is, I don't usually mess with rebates because they're paying the butt, so I went in going in low and like I'm not going to mess with the rebate probably and I still haven't and probably won't but the point is after rebate this was 129 I mean it was 149 to me but you could say it was 129 so to get a card like of this capability for 129 is insane you know and I did pay a little extra for new egg shipping because their free shipping takes longer so I paid like I think it's 699 for their express shipping or some shit kind of BS that you have to do that but <laughs> So the out the door was like 157. You don't New Egg doesn't charge tax in my area yet. That may be coming, but so you know I was so thrilled with this. And you get two. I don't know if it even mentions it here, but you get the AMD two free games deal. It doesn't mention it. That's odd. Mostly with most AMD cards. Let me look at. Um, you're getting. Two free games with purchase, two free games with purchase, two free games. With... What that is, is these games are great. You get your choice of two out of three of Resident Evil 2, which just came out, remake. Uh, The Division 2, I mean, a highly hyped upcoming game. Or uh, Devil May Cry 5, which is coming out soon. And there's another. So that's to me, that's three awesome AAA games. I'm not really interested greatly in any of them. But they're all things that are, you know, hey, shiny new toys, you know. I mean, uh, I ended up choosing Resident Evil 2, which I just downloaded for free. And it's $59.99 on Steam, and I got it free with this card. I'm not that interested. I'm not a big 
historical Resident Evil fan, although I do remember like the original on PlayStation. But, you know, to get that caliber of game for free and I get another one, I ended up choosing Devil May Cry 5. Kind of already regretting that. Should have gone to Division 2. Uh, there's another, I think if you do a little higher price card, you get all three free. But, uh, I mean, I already got Resident Evil 2 free. And I'm going to get a second one free. Devil May Cry 5. You know, for the price, that's insane value. And not only that, but if I'd have done the rebate, although I was just putting this as an example of a deal you can get right now. But the thing I don't like about this one is it's 4 gigabyte, and I recommend 8 gigabyte. But if you want to do it right now, you can get this for 129 But, um, yeah, that's insane value. And if I wanted to, like, really pinch my pennies, I could have done the rebate, which would have made this thing cost 129 I still may. I think I still have time, but I just don't want to bother cutting out the UPCs and all that nonsense. Uh, and then, uh, you can sell the game card because the game code because anybody with a Radeon 570 or 580 GP you can use them so you go on eBay and the, these game codes are selling for like 40 probably if you wanted to wait a little bit you could probably get like 70 bucks for the damn game codes you know because think about it, if there's somebody who's going to buy them those games anyway they're saving a large amount of money you know it, it's it's crazy how good a value because you know like I said, people are selling these game codes. Now, the the buyer has to have a 570 or 580. That's how it works. Because you go to this AMD website, Rewards, you have to sign up for it. Just put in your email, whatever. And then you put your code in that you got with the card, which was a little confusing, but Newegg sent me an email with it. And then, you're, then you choose your two games, and then you, whenever they come out, you get them. And, uh... But it's supposedly, yeah, it scans your card looking for a, the correct, either a 570 or 580 in your system before it will gift you the games or whatever, something like that. So the purchaser would have to have a 5 but nonetheless, like I said, I checked on eBay because I read about this, and they were selling for at least 40 bucks these game codes, which is a lot. And... You know, uh, like I said, if you wanted to just go ahead and wait a little, I'm sure you, they were selling for, you know, somebody. If somebody was actually planning to buy Resident Evil for 59 bucks and the Division Two for 59 bucks, you know, they they'd be willing to pay, you know, 80, 90 bucks for this code. You know, so if you were willing to wait, you know, I think you could probably get like 70 maybe. But if you want a fairly quick sale, I'm guessing 40 ish. You know, on eBay for this code. So if you take that off the price of the card, you could get the damn card with no games for like 89 bucks. You know, you're not touching that. You're not touching that. And about the performance of this thing, it's really good. It's it's basically almost to a 1066 gigabyte. I looked at a review and I I matched it up myself. Like 12 games they reviewed, and this thing came out 14 percent. The the G Force 1060 came out 14% faster than this, averaged over all the games. But that wasn't even a fair comparison because it was a 4 gigabyte 570 versus the 6 gigabyte 1060, and there were times when the RAM was hurting the 570. So 14%, if you had put an 8 gigabyte 570 in there, probably would have been like you know 8% or something at the end of the day. So this thing is. Basically, damn near as fast as the 1066 gigabyte, which will run you like 250. You know, and to get it for 149 out the door, or if you wanted to mess with rebates and sell the game bundle, even well, way cheaper. I mean, it's unbelievable. And I, I wanted to show a few reviews here. TechSpot did a roundup, and you know, here's some of the performance. Here it is, like in Shadow of the Tomb Raider, DX12, 1080p, 1440. You can see, like, look how well it does here. Oh, I compared it to the 1063 gigabyte, and it cleaned that thing's clock. You know, even the 4 gigabyte model, let alone the 8 gigabyte, would probably boost it a little more just for the extra VRAM. So you can see how it does. You know, it kills the 1050 Ti. This is only the 4 gigabyte 570, mind you. It kills. You know, it beats. It, it competes well. It beats probably competes or beats the 1063 gigabyte because that starts to get really RAM limited really fast. 
and then it, it's slower than the 1066 gigabyte. But like I said, by my calculations, it's 1066 gigabytes, 14% faster. Not that big a deal. And that was against this five, four gigabyte 570 because I used this site's reviews. So imagine against the eight gigabyte 570 because there's at least one of the games in the in the suite that were heavily RAM limited. You know, you could tell by comparing it to the 580 or where it should be, you know, etc etc so you know probably 10 percent the most the 1060 is actually faster than the card i got if that much so you know and to get in and i've got an extra two gigabyte of ram i got an eight gigabyte and there's games with a six gigabyte on the 1060 is not enough already so fantastic fantastic deal like i said you don't have to take my word for it this site did all the here they did an average frame rate and you can see the 1066 gigabyte averaged 82, the 580 averaged 82, the the 574 gigabyte averaged almost as much, and they're they've got it slower than the 1063. But again, you got to consider that with eight gigabytes, it's going to beat the 1063 gigabyte. I thought on my calculations it beat the 1063 gigabyte, but whatever. And here's like the NVIDIA competition in the range. You know, look at that. It's like half again as fast. I think they did a recent comparison and it was 43% faster. You're talking about half again as fast as the NVIDIA competition in this range. You know, and this is $20 more. You know, give me a break. At least than what I paid. Now, you're probably going to have to wait for a sale. I think that current uh, prices... Here's you can get a four gigabyte for 149. I would not go for the four gigabytes. Here, right now, as I make this video, you can get this one for 159.99, and then with the twenty dollar rebate card, 139. So that's only ten bucks more than I paid on a flash sale. So the sale ends in seven hours. See better. But if you don't get this, you know, just wait a few days and you'll see some sale like this. You know, I got mine for 149, a little better deal than this. But, you know, you may have to wait a little longer for that kind of deal. But if you wait a couple of days, a few days, you know, right now, if you're watching this video right now, you can get the 8 gb for 159 Uh, You know, okay, this is probably sale ends in four days. This is like a no-rush sale. 170 you can get an 8 gigabyte. So you may not get quite as good a deal as I You may have to wait a little bit to get as good a deal as I did, but you'll get it. Or you can just buy, pay a little bit more and still get a great deal now. You know, especially like I said, if consider if you want to sell those games or do a rebate card. So yeah, fantastic, fantastic value. You know, just unbelievable. I'm so thrilled with it. Oh, and I wanted to talk about my uh, benchmarks with it. Now it is a little bit loud, I think mine is, and I can't speak to all of them. But most of that I think is just that I got used to not having a graphics card. I mean, my system was dead silent because I literally only had a CPU in there. You know, it's almost like a fanless system just about <laughs> with only a CPU. But uh, it's not loud idle, but in games it whooshes up a little bit. <laughs> it's been hit or miss. Uh, uh, some games it has, some games it hasn't. But, you know, I'm sure it's no different than any other video cards. I'm just not used to them right now. And also, my, my system is very dusty. Uh, I don't clean it that much, and I should. So I'm sure that's a contributing factor. Honestly, it may even be my CPU, the one that's whooshing up. Like, I'm not sure, because it's covered. I know this, the heat thing on it's covered in dust. I really need to clean it. So it could be the CPU fan whooshing up and not even the graphics card that I'm blaming. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, it's a great card. And I want to talk about my personal experiences now. I don't own any games really and I'm not gonna go out and buy them just to benchmark it. Oh I I, I benchmarked the 3D Mark Time Spy because that's free. And it time it benchmarked almost exactly the same as my RX four eighty from a couple years ago, so that was good. Uh like literally like one of them was the five seventy was like thirty six seventy two and the five eighty was like thirty six ninety two. I mean I don't remember the exact numbers that may be completely wrong, but it was like that much difference. The 570 was literally just like maybe 1% slower. Basically identical. So it's identical to a 480 in performance. And that was on the like default clock probably. You know, you can do the overclock mode thing, get a little more performance out of it. I imagine if I did that, it would beat beat the old 480. So that's nice to see I'm getting a little more performance. So yeah, at the low end of the video card market, you cannot beat this card. It's amazing. I'm coming up on the 25 minute mark, so I want to hurry a little. Oh, and I want to talk about my results now. I didn't have anything to benchmark really much, but what I 
I, I did have the Destiny 2 because Bungie gave it away free a while ago, and I jumped on it at the time, even though I didn't have a card, because I knew I might get one soon. So I, I got that, so I had the Destiny 2, it's the base game, I guess, not the, any of the expansions or anything, but I, I got the base game free, so I, I played with it, and on 1440p, I believe, I was doing all, like, high settings, I don't think I was able to turn everything to very high, but, like, high to very high, somewhere in that range, 1440p, and then it was running, I believe, like, 50 to 60 in there, that range, you know? very good, you know, and this is a native 1440p, mind you, which is a little stressful. In this card, you know, if you read any reviews, they'll all tell you, oh, it's, it's you know, for 1080p gaming. No, you can, you know, it's not ideal, but in, you can run a 1440p monitor easily off of this. Like I said, I was running Destiny 2, not the most demanding game, but a great looking game. I think it was in the 50 to 60 FPS range, like I said, high to very high settings at 1440p native at a you know, 50 to 60 FPS in this card. And here's another thing. I'm not a frame rate stickler at all. Anything over 30 is good for me. That's great for me because, you know, a 30, you know, I'm fine with the console type experience of a game running at 30 FPS. I just don't give a shit. You know, I'm not a competitive multiplayer and it looks fine to me. So that gives me a lot of headroom in the fact that I can go ahead and run my games at 30 FPS and it's fine to me. So it gives me like double the power I would have versus if I needed them to run at 60 FPS. But, you know, but so be that as it may, Destiny was running 50 to 60 at, you know, like high plus settings at 1440p native. That's fantastic. Uh, Destiny 2, I mean. Uh, then the other one I tried was I happened to see that COD Black Ops 4 was running a free multiplayer weekend. So I downloaded it and, uh, you know, tested it, just try something else, and it was the same deal at high to very high-ish type settings. It was running about 50 to 60, you know, so another, and again, that's not the most demanding, but that's great on a 1440p monitor, you know, and then, um, so anybody tells you that like, it's not good for 1440p or whatever nonsense, you know, as long as you're not too demanding, it's great, you know, and then, um, and then, uh, oh, I, I got the Resident Evil 2 game, the, the free one just tested it and now I will say the free game thing is a little annoying because first of all you have to wait for a code in the email and I didn't know that I didn't know how it worked they're not very clear at all on explaining it then you got to go to the site called amdrewards.com sign up there no big deal but it is a little annoying to have to give me your email and stuff but then you have to pick the games that you want and then it'll say like now yesterday when Resident Evil 2 came out at like midnight Everybody's frantically refreshing because some people were getting their codes and some weren't. And I ended up having it didn't come in last night, and it didn't come in till today at like three eight p.m. I think it was. So you may have to wait, but I mean that's still release day. I mean, shoot. And uh, yeah, you may have to wait a little, and it's a, it's annoying at the time, but I'm sure in a week I won't give a shit. <laughs> so and I did get it on release day. You know, can't complain about that. But just an aside about how the free games works. <laughs> but, uh, so, and it's through Steam, so. <clears throat> and anyways, uh, well, yeah, so so I ran Resident Evil 2 after I got it, and I was turning most, again, most of the settings up to high to very high. You know, somewhere I'd say like a three-quarter range, you know, <laughs> like if the low is like 25% and the medium is like 50%, I'd say these settings are like 75, 80% on all these games in general, if I could describe it. I turned a lot of the settings up because it auto defaulted me to really low settings. I don't know what the hell that was about. <clears throat> but uh, I turned it to 1440p native. I turned most of the settings to high to very high, you know. And uh, I was again getting like 60 FPS ish. I was dipping a little bit here and there, I think. I'm not even sure it was. Because, like, when, you know, it, it, when I just started the game, it just auto defaulted to, like I said, like. 1080p and like low settings. I don't know what it was doing there. It still looked all right, but but I, you know, as soon as I got into the game, and as soon as I could get into options, I changed it to native 1440p and stuff like that. But it was running like 60 FPS as the default was my point. So I, you know, so I'm sitting there and I had fraps open. So I'm sitting there thinking, oh yeah, this is gonna probably let's see what my frame rate is after I change all these settings to high to very high. You know. I didn't go overboard, but there's a lot of settings in this thing. You can really micromanage it, and I don't know what ha the hell half of them do, or you know which ones to leave low, and all that. But anyways, I uh, 
I turned everything pretty much to high to very high, as always. Like I said, maybe left a couple at medium. I don't remember the ones I thought might be okay to leave at medium. Because I figure they probably don't impact the looks much, but probably, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, but yeah, mostly like high to very high. And then I go back into the game, like how much is my frame rate going to drop from 60 now? It stayed at 60, you know? And that was so, at, at native 1440p, you know, high to very high. And, and I don't know if it would have dropped later or anything. So, and I, that's only three games. And, you know, I understand they're probably all not greatly demanding. All that I understand. But, so I'm pretty thrilled. You know, you can't beat this card for the value. And I want to touch on one more thing, which is that if you're worried about something uh, better coming along soon, in the low end, I don't think it's going to happen. Because there was a leak about NVIDIA's new cards. And their low end card is going to be 179, I think. So for starters, it's a little more expensive than this. Second to that, uh, it's going to have like either four gigabytes or even three gigabytes of RAM, I think. Okay, that right there, even if my card's like 20% slower, you know, even if the, and that'd be like a worst case. First of all, I paid less, so it's in a different price bracket. Second of all, the eight gigabyte RAM is going to more than make up for being a little slower. Even if that's the case, you know, we'll have to see what the NVIDIA card, new cards look like in the low end. So, you know, I'm future proof here and nothing's going to top what I got for value because, like I said, even if NVIDIA comes out with a faster card that's even close to this price, it's going to be with 4 gigabytes of RAM guaranteed. And I got 8 gigabytes sitting pretty in mine. So, anyway, the 570 is by far the best value in gaming. Like I said, this, um, this, uh, this review kind of confirms it. Uh, I believe at the end they do a cost for prime and look look how much better the five the five eighty is also a fantastic deal if you want to spend a little more. It's going to be a little faster. You know these are the two best deals and this this shows you by far in gaming right now. I mean these suckers are very fast and very cheap right now, and they come with the free game bundles. It's absurd value. I think Nvidia has some too free games, but. I'm not sure what cards they come on and whatnot. I don't think it's as good of a bundle, you know. So and you know they show you right here the cost per frame. They're just dominated. So don't buy Nvidia, you know. Uh, get an AMD at this price range and be happy.